welcome. In this film, we'll briefly explore some common causes of same level slips, trips, and falls in workplaces. We'll also consider precautions that can prevent many of these falls. Illustrated transcripts of this film are available on Kansas State University's Gen Ag 712 course website and through a link provided on our YouTube channel. Same level incidents occur when a worker slips, trips, or falls but does not land on any level that is lower than the walking surface. In other words, same level falls do not include falls from ladders, scaffolds, roofs, or other heights. To illustrate the human consequences of same level falls, let's consider an actual injury that was reported in a nursing journal. A healthcare worker was walking on a concrete floor at work. She tripped on a broken section of the floor. This sent her falling uncontrollably headlong into a doorpost. As a result of the impact, her forehead was cut or lacerated. The fall also caused a subconjunctival hemorrhage, which is bleeding that causes a bright red patch in the white of the eye. A subconjunctival hemorrhage occurs when small blood vessels break, so this type of injury is similar to a bruise. It occurs just under the conjunctiva, which is the clear outer membrane that covers the white of the eye. Although subconjunctival hemorrhages look serious, they usually resolve on their own with no lasting effects. Sadly, the worker did suffer other more severe head injuries. First, the impact caused a concussion, which is a serious injury to the brain. In addition, the impact caused damage to her optic nerves which are the main nerves that send information from the eyes to the brain. This damage caused a gradual loss of vision and within two years the worker was blind. Same level slips, trips, and falls cause many workplace injuries. In fact, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that 17% of all lost time occupational injuries result from slips, trips, and falls on the same level. Same level falls are not only common, they are also expensive, accounting for billions of dollars in workers' compensation claims each year. This film will explore four of the leading causes of same level falls in workplaces. First, workers often fall when their feet slide on slippery surfaces. Second, workers may trip over loose objects that have been left in aisles and other walkways. Third, workers may stumble on imperfections in the walking surface, such as broken concrete and rugged ground. Fourth, same level falls are especially common when workers are engaged in certain activities such as walking while distracted or while carrying, pushing, and pulling objects. Let's begin by discussing same level slips and falls that are caused by slick floor and ground surfaces. To provide context for our discussion, we'll consider food and feed processing plants, a setting where the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics has found that workers slip and fall at a rate that is about double the average of other manufacturing sectors. This food processing area is located in the meat lab in the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry at Kansas State University. 
Here, steaks and other cuts of meat are sliced and packaged for sale. In food manufacturing areas such as this, slips often happen when floors are wet from sanitizing. Workers may also slip if they step on loose pieces of fat and meat that have fallen to the floor. This room was designed with many features to reduce the risk of falls. For instance, the floor tiles have a slip resistant finish. In addition, the floor slopes toward drains to eliminate standing water. To further reduce the risk of falls, workers dress in slip resistant footwear. In addition, they sometimes stand on slip-resistant floor mats. Finally, the floors are frequently cleaned to prevent any buildup of slippery grease and other contaminants. In food and feed manufacturing, slippery floors also occur where grain, flour, and other solid particles are processed. Consider, for instance, this mill where workers manufacture livestock feed. It is an older mill that is scheduled for replacement, and it was built before modern dust control measures were available. In many older feed mills such as this, Grain is processed using equipment that has only a limited capacity for capturing fine particles. As a result, the floors often get coated with a slippery film of grain dust. Frequent cleaning and the use of non-slip footwear are very important here. In contrast to the older feed milling facility, Consider the dust-free appearance of this modern flour mill. This is the Howe Ross flour mill operated by the Department of Grain Science and Industry at Kansas State University. State-of-the-art equipment in this mill is designed to enclose the grain and flour, keeping floors and other surfaces much cleaner. In spite of the modern enclosed equipment, some flour and other grain products do occasionally escape and make the floors slippery. Most often, this happens when machines are open for adjustment and maintenance. Slipping hazards also arise when small grains accidentally spill onto the floors. Thus, frequent cleaning and the use of non-slip footwear are important even in the most up-to-date facilities. Food and feed manufacturing is not the only industry where workers face increased risks of slips and falls. For instance, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports a high rate of same-level falls in agriculture, particularly in livestock handling. As reported by researcher Kim Costell, the high rate of same-level falls among animal handlers is due in part to slippery floor and ground surfaces. In settings where livestock are handled, slick walking surfaces are common due to mud, manure, urine, water, and animal feed. As in other workplaces, Slip-resistant footwear and frequent cleaning are important preventive measures. Researchers have studied falls on slippery floors in other industries. For instance, scientists such as Jennifer Bell and Santosh Verma have found that workers in restaurants often slip and fall because of spilled water, cooking oil, and cleaning solutions. In healthcare settings, scientists such as Charlotte Drebbit have found that workers often slip where liquids have been spilled on floors. 
some researchers have focused on special populations of workers. For instance, scientist Carrie Dunning found that slick floors caused same-level falls among pregnant women in many different work settings. These findings are especially concerning because falls present a danger to both the mother and fetus. Other researchers have explored the influence of weather on slippery walkways. For instance, Tim Bentley, Jennifer Bell, Charlotte Drebbit, Carrie Dunning, Christina Kemlert, and D.P. Manning have found that same level falls on slick surfaces are especially common in winter when snowy and icy conditions prevail. At these times, outdoor walkways require special attention in the form of shoveling and de-icing. Indoor walkways also require special attention during inclement weather. For instance, doormats and frequent mopping may be needed to keep floors free of mud and moisture that can be tracked in during periods of rain and snow. To illustrate the impact slippery floors can have on workers, let's consider another actual workplace injury. This incident was reported by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. According to the report, a school custodian was mopping a floor. He finished and left, but he forgot to put up a wet floor sign. Soon, a teacher walked through the area. Apparently unaware of the hazard, the teacher stepped in a puddle of water. He slipped and fell. The fall broke the teacher's kneecap or patella and he had to be hospitalized. A broken patella is a serious and painful injury that may require surgery. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, these fractures often lead to arthritis, permanent muscle weakness, loss of motion in the knee, and long-term pain. To prevent injuries such as this, it is best to schedule mopping for times when the fewest people are in the building. Wet floor signs can also help, as suggested by the research of April Chambers and others, who have found that people tend to walk more slowly and carefully when they know a floor is slick. Now that we've considered slippery walking surfaces, let's shift our attention to another common cause of same level falls, tripping on loose objects. Common examples of loose tripping hazards include extension cords, floor mats with curled edges, open file drawers, and work supplies stored in corridors. Tripping on loose objects has been studied in many industries. For instance, researcher Tim Bentley has found that workers often trip and fall on cluttered walking surfaces at construction sites. In manufacturing plants, scientist Harlan Amandis has found that workers often fall when they trip on machine parts, hoses, and other loose objects on plant floors. In yet another setting, researcher Jennifer Bell has documented that workers in healthcare commonly trip over cords, medical tubing, open desk drawers, chairs, and other objects in cluttered areas. The problem of tripping over loose objects seems to be widespread. Scholars such as Larry Lane and D.P. Manning have found that workers in just about all industries trip on cords, equipment, scrap materials, and other loose objects that have been left in walkways. 
To illustrate the consequences of tripping at work, let's consider another report of an actual injury. According to OSHA, a worker was walking through an office. There was an electrical cord in the aisle. The worker tripped over the cord and fell forward into the front counter. Then she hit the floor. The impact dislocated her right shoulder and she was hospitalized for her injuries. To prevent painful and disabling injuries from trips and falls on loose objects, walkways must be kept clear and uncluttered. Besides tripping on loose objects, workers sometimes stumble because of uneven floor and ground surfaces, which comprise the next major cause of same level falls that we'll consider. Tripping on rough surfaces has been explored in many settings by researchers such as Harlan Amandus, Jennifer Bell, Tim Bentley, Jay Fothergill, and Kim Costell. One familiar example of an uneven walking surface is a broken sidewalk, which may cause workers to trip. As a less common example, consider the door stops that have been bolted to the floor in this hallway. As we see here, the door stops create a tripping hazard because they are located in the path of travel that workers take when entering the building. The issue was resolved by removing the door stops and using the door's hardware to limit the distance of its swing. The potential human impact of tripping on surface irregularities is illustrated by a workplace injury reported by OSHA. A worker was walking across a kitchen floor. There was a seam in the vinyl floor covering that didn't lay flat. The worker's foot caught the edge of the raised seam. This caused her body to twist, and she heard a bone snap in her leg. The sudden twisting of her body broke her left femur or thigh bone. The break required surgery, and she had to be hospitalized. To prevent serious tripping injuries such as this, it is important to maintain floors, sidewalks and other walkways in good condition with no uneven surfaces. It is also important to design floors with a minimum of irregularities that might cause stumbling. As a final category of causes, let's consider some activities and behaviors that tend to be associated with same level falls. First, Researchers such as J.C. Davies and Kerry Dunning have found that same level slips, trips, and falls often happen when workers are carrying, pushing, or pulling materials. To prevent slips and trips, walkways must be clean, dry, and unobstructed. Shoes should have non-slip tread proper material handling equipment should be used, and workers must focus their full attention on their task, as we see in this example from the print shop in Kansas State University's Department of Communications. Slips, trips, and falls also tend to happen when workers rush to where they are going, for instance, by leaving sidewalks and cutting across the grass, as documented by researchers such as Tim Bentley, Carrie Dunning, and Roger Haslam. Many of these falls could be prevented simply by walking on the sidewalks that are provided and by installing new sidewalks 
where frequent shortcutting indicates additional walkways are needed. As a final example of activities associated with slips and trips, researchers such as Tim Bentley and Roger Haslam have found that same level falls are especially common when workers are distracted and not paying attention. To prevent these falls, we must watch where we are going and we must stop rather than continuing to walk when distractions arise. We've covered a lot of information, so let's review. Slips, trips, and falls on the same level are common, costly to businesses, and may cause serious injuries. Many same level falls happen when workers slip on slick surfaces. Slippery walking surfaces are caused by ice and snow, liquids, dusts, and granules. We employ a variety of methods to prevent falls on slippery walkways. For instance, we may enclose messy processes to keep contaminants off floors. If liquids are expected to be present, we need proper drainage and slip-resistant surfaces for walking and standing. It is important to remove slippery contaminants from floors using effective cleaning procedures. It is also important to keep walkways free of ice and snow. Where walking surfaces are likely to be slick, workers will need slip-resistant footwear. To help keep indoor floors clean and slip-free, we place floor mats inside building entrances so occupants can wipe the soles of their shoes when rain, snow, ice, and mud are likely to cause problems. We also post warnings to let workers know they should step carefully when surfaces are slick. A second major cause of same level falls consists of loose objects that cause workers to stumble. Examples include tools, equipment, work supplies, and cords. To prevent stumbling, it is important to keep walkways clear of all loose objects. A third major cause of same level falls consists of structures and objects that are a part of the walkway. Examples include the rugged surfaces of broken sidewalks, rough ground, and irregularities that are inappropriately built into walkways. We prevent stumbles on uneven floors and ground by designing walkways with a minimum of obstructions and by keeping walking surfaces in good repair. Our final category of causes consists of activities known to be associated with a high risk of same level falls. For instance, a disproportionate number of falls occurs when workers are carrying, pushing, and pulling materials. We prevent falls during these tasks with slip resistant floors and footwear, unobstructed walkways, the use of appropriate material handling equipment, and by concentrating fully on the task at hand. Another activity associated with same level falls is hurrying and taking shortcuts away from established walkways. Preventive measures include slowing down, 
keeping to the established walking surfaces, and installing additional walkways where needed. The last high-risk activity we considered was walking while distracted. One way to prevent these falls is to pause and stand still until the distracting task has been completed. This has been a brief overview of causes and preventive measures for same level falls in workplaces. More information is available on the websites of safety and health organizations such as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, Great Britain's Health and Safety Executive, the Canadian Centre of Occupational Health and Safety, and Safe Work Australia.